I'm Jeff Wang. I will be the head coach for Harrisburg University uh, for the varsity program starting fall 2018. I'm originally from Minnesota, and I got my start as a, as a top-ranked player for League Overwatch and Hearthstone, which are the three titles that we'll be offering for fall. I'm Chad Smeltz, a.k.a. History Teacher, and I'm the eSports Program Director for Harrisburg University. So before Harrisburg University, I was working in the professional scene, uh, mostly League of Legends, but it kind of outreached to different areas. Uh, I was the head coach for Team 8, a professional League of Legends team that got acquired by Immortals, the split after. And then I was the general manager for Energy and then Phoenix 1 after. So overall, I don't think that there's a ton of, of super big esports school. And, you know, I apologize if I miss anyone in specific. Um, but, but off the top of my head, I think uh, UCI, University of California, Irvine, uh, University of Toronto used to be a big one. Uh, Maryville, Columbia College. You know, there's probably only, you know, Robert Morris. There's only a handful, I think, of colleges that people even recognize as schools that have esports programs that are, that are interesting, you know. And I think that over time, you're going to see more schools be involved with this. So I think it's kind of important to see, like, where they pop up and, and what they're interested in and things like that. So, but I think over the next couple of years, you'll see uh, esports schools kind of, f or schools that with esports programs kind of flesh out their programs even more. So you'll be able to see the things that make them unique, too, which I think is really cool. Yeah, so I'm sure most people that are into gaming now are pretty familiar with Discord. So what we what we were gonna do is do an in-house in scrimmage where we have teams play each other of people that are interested in joining the program. We've already vetted them and seen their vods, and then we'll actually be putting in people that are uh, that we've selected to be in those those Discord chat rooms to be able to hear your communication and take notes, and then uh, we'll convene at the end to kind of decide which which players were the most were the most interested in. Yeah, and look, we know it's a team game. We know sometimes you're gonna have bad games. We know sometimes your teammates are gonna have bad games. So we're not solely relying on Definitely do not. you just win the scrim and okay, that that's all we look at. Like there's so much more that goes into it, and we're well aware of those sorts of things. So we take into consideration, you know, how you do over a stretch of games, or how your team's doing, or sometimes how other you know factors come into it. So a lot of students are generally pretty worried about that, and it's something that we've already considered very well. I mean, one of the biggest things in esports is like you play playing by yourself is one thing. It's it's a completely different environment once you get into playing with teams and playing with players and understanding how to use your teammates as resources. So we just want to, you know, give people a chance to put to get their feet wet when they when they come into our tryouts to be able to play with other players. And we understand that not a lot of people have had that experience before. So I think it's just a great opportunity for people to get involved in esports from the very beginning. Yeah, I had one person reach out to me about Hearthstone and ask me like, what happens if RNG, you know, messes yeah, me yeah. out? I was like, well, we know, we understand. Like, you know, we play the games, we're actively coaching it. Like those are, those are things that we take into consideration. So you don't right. have to worry about that sort of stuff. I, I think another great thing from the collegiate perspective is, you know, professional organizations like, like, the, like the new franchising systems that are, ha are happening on the West Coast, there are a lot about results-based things. Uh, in collegiate, it's a lot more about what can these players accomplish as both a student and and a competitive athlete, and it's it's about striking a really good balance. So, uh, you know, from my perspective, I worked three years for the uh, the varsity program at the University of Minnesota. It was all about you know here's our practice schedule, but then we're also going to go out after and get chicken wings like three days a week. You know, like it's it's all about kind of building that team environment, that ritual process of you know just creating friends and, and creating a network for people to really build on. It's about thinking about the game in any free time you have, but then also just being like, understanding when to cut it off. Like if you have a final or, or something coming up and you have a ton of homework and you, you're dealing with personal issues, that's that's where you can just look to uh, to your coach, to your support staff and just be like, listen, I can't I can't practice this week or like, I can't do that. It's a lot more flexible in collegiate esports than it is in the professional scene. And I think that's why it's a, it's a great balance. Uh, obviously we, we wanna win and we wanna we want to take it all for all the collegiate leagues, but we understand that players are humans, and we also understand that you know our players are going to be students as well. So um, understanding that and having empathy for those players is, is one of the biggest things for our program. Well, 
one of the big things for collegiate sports is making your time efficient because we understand like it's not like you have 16 hours a day to practice like a professional team so what we want to do is just try to fit as much as we can in a really condensed period of time to make make it worthwhile for for our players and our students so you know we want to do scrim blocks that are scheduled well in advance the same way a professional organization would do it and then we would review review games look at uh how to individually work with players to, to set goals, understand strengths and weaknesses, and build leaders uh, throughout the year. Yeah, if, there, if there's one thing I learned about scheduling and working with the pros is that, you know, they'll work 12, 13, 14 hour days, and it's not always efficient. So like, that's something that, that you know, a lot of practice goes into, and we're, we're going to be able to do. Uh, and to, to be frank, there's, there's less time, right? You know, with an education, you have less time to do that sort of thing. So efficiency is super important. It's everything. Yeah. Efficiency is everything, for sure. Yeah, probably around three to four times a week um, is pretty standard. And one of the cool things is, is that we're going to have a, a varsity space. So colleges, uh, they do have like an eSports space, but usually it's like a repurposed classroom or something similar to that. Uh, one of the cool things about Harrisburg University is that we're going to have a, a huge dedicated space specifically for the varsity eSports. So whether you're on League of Legends, Overwatch, Hearthstone, or any future eSports that we introduce, there's going to be a cool, a really amazing, unique space that we're working on that's that's just for varsity. So they'll be able to come in uh, you know, after class. They'll be able to kind of hang out there too, even if they're not playing. Uh, like we want to create a space that it makes you want to be there. You know, I know I'll be there even when I don't have to be just because that's how good it's going to be. So we're really looking forward to building that. And that's what we're doing right now as we speak, actually. Yeah, it's about creating a family environment where, uh, you know, after class, they just they can just go to the space, play, unwind and, you know, maybe get some food, get some snacks, you know, talk to talk to their coaches directly and, and really have like a casual relationship with the people that they're working with every day. Yeah, so they'll practice three, four days a week, and then they'll probably be there playing more past that because they'll want to be there too. So I think that's really cool. Uh, so for, for League, League of Legends, Hearthstone, and Overwatch, so five, three, and six players each, uh, we're looking for players that have really, really strong baseline communication. They really know how to work together in a team environment, and then we want to grow those players into... Um, frankly, into professional representatives of the, both the university as an academic institution and also professional competitors on the national stage. Yeah, like I, I've worked in the pro scene and, and obviously skill is very important when it comes to that sort of thing. But there's other factors that go into it, too. And, and also the university, you know, you're getting an education, too. So there are certain things where, like, I want to make sure that you're actually interested in, in, in following up that education and with with your interest in esports and kind of finding out those details, too, after we do tryouts and things like that. So there are a lot of things that definitely combine into one when you're doing a tryout. There's the competitive standpoint and then the after that, too. So I think when it comes to esports, scholarships are, are kind of all over the place. Uh, you say the magic word scholarship and people are already interested, uh, but depending on what school you're talking to, what, what the scholarship looks like, they're very different. Uh, I know I was talking to Shady uh, Jordan, who went to RMU, who I worked with on Phoenix One, and he told me that when he first went to RMU, he wasn't sure what the scholarship was going to look like or what percent that it paid for or, or what level it had uh, what conditions there were. You know, when you're a student, it's kind of hard to get all that information in one. Um, for Harrisburg University, we're doing uh, 15 full ride scholarships, and those are academic scholarships. Um, so obviously, you know, you'll have to pay attention to school. It's, it's, an, it's an even balance, uh, just like any other scholarship. Ride and Blizzard both have their own guidelines for, you know, what students have to meet to participate in their collegiate leagues. So we would follow that. And we'd also have a really good relationship with our student services team. So, you know, they're getting not only the ability to, to, to learn and to play, but also, you know, getting that emotional support, getting the individual one-on-one -on -one support so that they can manage their time well. Um, if they're getting frustrated with something, they have someone to talk to. Um, and I think that's something that, you know, even a lot of pro organizations don't have that infrastructure or that ability to really empathize with people on a, on a really personal level yet. So it's something that in collegiate, I think, is is a really good opportunity for people to, to get into. Yes, yeah, so we have these full ride scholarships. And then the other cool part is, is it's international. And it's something that we've had a lot of questions about is, is, you know, hey, I'm from Canada or hey, I'm from Europe or or hey, you know, I'm, I'm from this country. Can can we can we apply? And, uh, you know, we have a great visa team that we're uh, they'll be willing to work on it. So if you're international and, and you're curious in this, you're more than welcome to apply. And, and it's the same exact thing, a full ride. Nothing changes. So I think that's a really cool aspect about it, too. So 
So for esports scholarships, there's kind of like two ways that you can go about it. The first way is, you know, talking to the school in question. Uh, for example, on Harrisburg University site, we have like an esports section at the top of the mm-hmm. website. It's super easy to find. So that way you can kind of click on it, fill out like a very basic admission form and go through and, and get that part done. And then obviously for any esports scholarship, there would be like the, the tryout application, which involves, you know, saying like, hey, here are the titles that I'm interested in. Here's what my rank is. Here's proof of that. Uh, you know, maybe for us submitting some some video on demand, some VODs to be able to watch so we can see what your train of thought is and, and the process for you playing the game uh, and kind of combining those two things. Because obviously the college that you apply to is going to want to know that you're applying. And then the people that are running the scholarships and kind of finding out like who you are and, and what you do in the game and things like that. And they have to know what's going on, too. So I think it's making sure you cover both parts. Yeah, And as we grow the program, we're going to be looking to add more staff members onto our team. Obviously, right now, it's just the two of us, you know, working working through creating the program, creating this infrastructure for events and teams and things like that. But, you know, we want to be adding more people. So there are going to be a lot of other opportunities for people who now don't necessarily want to be a player or don't have the experience to be a player, but they want to get involved in coaching and working with players directly, esports psychology, all of these kind of cool, new, trendy fields that people, there's no opportunities uh, to, get, to get involved, really, outside of, you know, going to the pro scene, which is, you know, it's just another avenue where people can kind of pursue their interests. So one of the cool things about esports is is that there's a lot of different jobs that go into making it what it is, right? You're not just a professional player. There's a million different jobs that go into it. And parents talk about it all the time, like, you know, what what is esports and what goes into it? And then students will say, well, how do I even get into it from the first place? Most people just say, well, you have to find your interest hustle a lot and talk to a million different people and and hope you get a chance to do that. Uh, That's the way it is now, but we're not only hoping, but we're introducing esports classes that help you, one, first identify all the different avenues that go into it. So kind of making like an overview class. Uh, I'm teaching one at the University of California, Irvine, for that reason, to kind of show them, hey, this is what the media looks like, or or, hey, this is what the esports organizations look like, or pro players, or, or game developers. You know, there's so much that goes into making it like that. So we're trying to focus classes on going into all those different aspects. So management, tournament admins, and just all these different things. Um, Because a lot of students know that esports, they're passionate about it, but they don't know which aspect they like the most. And they kind of take these classes and they start to learn more. And and then they realize, oh, there are different things that I didn't realize that go into making esports what it was. And then they can pursue those further and kind of have a focus or a concentration in them. Um, So that's what we're aiming to do. Uh, we'll be at Harrisburg University. We'll be introducing esports classes into an interactive media program led by Charles Palmer, which is going to be pretty cool, and that should be starting probably in the fall or spring, depending on how it works out. Um, but overall, I think it's important to understand all the different parts that make esports work. So the most straightforward internships are, are usually things involving social media because you don't have to be physically located uh, to, to do them. For example, if most things are in Southern California or, you know, if we do them in Harrisburg, social media is probably the easiest to start out with. But we definitely want to branch way beyond that. And we already we already have internships that are currently being set up outside of that. Uh, some cool ones that I, that I think we're really focusing on is, is the production of things. So we're going to be running a bunch of tournaments. Uh, And we kind of want to get students internships to work with uh, the Whitaker Center, which is where we're going to be hosting some of our events and and doing internships involving the production side of things. So setting up these tournaments, uh, what goes into all the camera work, what goes into casting, uh, what goes into getting it all set up beforehand. How do you even set up a tournament and, and do the administrative work? And we're going to be doing those in person. So I think that's really cool. But then also reaching out to esports organizations and getting them to offer specific parts of their thing too. Specifically, I think management is a big one and kind of seeing what the managers do there and getting everything to where it needs to be. Uh, and then probably working on things involving content. So, you know, how do you get your brand out there? How do you get people to watch what you're doing or be a part of it? Um, so those are probably the most specific internships that we're working on right now. There's definitely going to be more in the future, but we're trying to figure out what those are. I think there are a lot of esports topics and concentrations that people don't realize that they have already applicable skills in and can warp esports into it. 
Um, you know, esports seems like a kind of a magical land that nobody knows what it is and things like that. Um, but I think some cool categories that involve that are like our data analytics. Like I know in the last six months to a year, teams have come up to me and, and talked about like, hey, how do I find statistics about all of the players and, and all of the, of the things that go into making the game work the way it does? And, and people have been working on analytics, but there's no there's no like down pat answer for a lot of it. There's some popular options, but every every esports organization, every game developer are looking for analytics people. And I think that's one cool avenue. From a co- from a coaching perspective, it's it's super cool to be able to take the raw numbers um, from a lot of cool tools that are already out there. Maybe develop our own tools internally so that we can you know track our players and how they're doing, how they're feeling, uh, and then turning that into you know ideas about what to do, where to take players, what direction we want to do to take the program in. Um, even even in terms of what content we put out, you know who's watching, who who is really interested in what we're doing, and then catering our future plans to to fit those needs. And marketing, I think, is another big one. Esports is really popular in the age range of, you know, between 15 and, and 28, I'd say, is a big target demographic that all of these sponsors are looking at and saying, we want that demographic. How do we get to it? And if you can figure out how to market successfully to those group of people, you know, uh, sponsorships, universities, organizations, you know, they'll be falling over each other trying to get to you to figure out what your plan is to be so successful in that. So I think marketing is another huge one that we're going to see a, a really big push in over the next couple of years. I mean, a big reason why esports has grown so much, so exponentially in a very short period of time has been the ability to create touch points for people to follow and have those those avenues cross advertise each other. You know, we have YouTube, we have Twitter, we have, uh, you know, Twitch.tv, which is, you know, the live streaming platforms just exploded in the past few years. Um, and what we're doing at Harrisburg University is we want to create something that students and people that are interested in esports, people that want to get into esports, we want to give them something to follow. So we're doing events, we're doing, you know, we're having our teams compete at the top level around the nation. We're going to be hosting, you know, one of a kind camps, one of a kind classes, and really just giving people an opportunity to just interact with esports. If they've never done it before, we're here to answer their questions. If they're a student looking to get into it, um, we're going to be creating, you know, other levels for them to get to get involved with. So for summer camps, there's a lot of different things that you can do. It depends on what avenue you want to specifically focus on, because one camp definitely can't encompass all the different options. So for uh, the summer camp that Harrisburg University is doing this June, we're focusing specifically on the players. A lot of our stuff focuses on things outside of the players, so we did want to give them something in specific. So we're going to be having 25 students between the ages of probably 15 and 18 come out to Harrisburg. And we're looking to kind of get them better in their eSport title of choice between the one that we were offering. So Overwatch, League of Legends, and Hearthstone. And whether, regardless of, of whether they're just brand new to the game, honestly, or they're an experienced pro that's playing at the top level, we're giving them, you know, customized coaching and customized, a customized experience that helps them improve on their eSport of choice. And I think that there's a lot of interest in that because, Usually you have to have people of the same group or the same skill level to kind of efficiently coach. And and we figured out a cool way to kind of lay it out and give everybody a unique experience. Uh, It's kind of like tutoring in a way where you just figure out what they need and then kind of pull from that. I think a big part of the experience is actually even just even just choosing your name. Like that's just a big ritual thing that everyone in esports is now used to. But it's kind of weird to think about like you know, 40, 45 year old people who are coming to games just recently and then creating their gamer tag. And it's like Black Arrow 69 or something. And you're like, well, I mean, not the best. At least you're, at least you're you know, getting into it a little bit. But, um, you know, part that that's big, a big part of it, creating your own identity, creating who you want to be. Um, this other persona, I think, is a really cool aspect of esports that not another not a lot of, not a lot of other industries have. And then, you know, getting a jersey and having that name placard on the back and playing under this this kind of team organization, um, I think it's something super unique and, and a really cool experience for anyone who's interested in, in doing the camps. Someone who's interested in, in learning, someone who's, you know, they've, they have a clear passion. And from, a, from our perspective, it's really easy to see passion, you know. Um, anyone who's going to be interested in a camp like this is someone who has a very clear vision of where they want to be in esports. They, they're either you know, a, a passionate lifelong gamer, they want to get interested in a specific type of game, um, they want to learn about things so that they can keep, you know, keep involved throughout their life, 
And it's just about us being able to identify that and saying, you know, here's what you want to learn. Here's what we can teach you. And I think there's not a lot of other organizations with that kind of expertise and that background or willingness to teach those people, regardless of what rank they're coming in at, what, you know, what level of knowledge they have. It's all about just giving people that opportunity. And it's an opportunity that we both had. And from that, from that perspective, it's like, you need to have that. If, you, if you're anyone who's interested in esports, you need to have that first, you know, have someone take a chance on you and give you that shot to, to really keep pursuing what you love. I think the cool thing about camps and college in general is that you're, you're taking classes that you want to take. You're taking things that you want to be a part of. So a lot of people are already going to be super interested in it, but I can definitely tell when there are people that go like above and beyond or, or who will implement these things after their camp is done and stuff like that and kind of come back to you at a later point in time and be like, hey, check out what I just did. You know, look at this achievement or look at this cool thing I got to do or look what I'm a part of now. And that's the kind of stuff that I want to see. So I think there's a lot of people uh, that are interested in esports that like being a part of it, but like there's a lot of people that don't want to play the game or they, you know, they like watching or, or maybe they like playing casually, but it's just, you know, they want to be focused on more of the experience. And that's something that we're looking to deliver also. Uh, so we're going to be hosting these big tournaments that are going to be held at a place called the Whitaker Center. They have a big, you know, 40 by 40 digital cinema screen that 40 you can, feet for yeah 40 feet for reference obviously that 40 inches yes by 40 inches <laughs> very very intense uh but no it's, it's going to be this cool viewing experience where it's like where you go into a movie theater and you know it's kind of like a giant viewing party where you're just like oh my gosh this thing is huge and you get that that feeling of all the sound around you and and being able to watch the esports like that um so th that's the first thing is just providing a very authentic easy to look at impressive experience but then beyond that, uh, getting them involved in, in different events and, and whether you're from the local community and doing community events or whether you want to come from like out of state to go see. It's like if you wanted to go see a concert or something like that and you, you make the effort to go to Harrisburg or go to that spot to go see it. That's what we're looking to do. So providing experience that's like, oh, my gosh, they're selling tickets in my area to do something like anytime LCS or maybe Overwatch League will say like, hey, we're going to go to this spot. People are like, yes, finally. Finally, they're doing this. And if you're on the East Coast, you're saying that every time you're like, please just give me something. Uh, but in Harrisburg, we're going to be doing that consistently. So if you're looking to have that esports experience, you'll be able to come out to Harrisburg and, and actually do that. So uh, one of the biggest things when you're building a team is, you, you know, you want to win. Like that That's pretty straightforward stuff. Uh, um and I think that we could compete and we could we could put together a, a really competitive team and we could do well or even be the best. But that's kind of hollow without having things surrounding it. Uh, you know, like you're just competing. Great. You win. It's like, oh, we get to say that. But you know, what are you doing it for? Or like, what's the point of doing so? Uh, you know, in the pros, it's different because there's a there's a lot more that goes into it. It's it's the professional scene, but in the collegiate scene, you know, it's not as much. Uh, and at least I feel that we want to do something bigger than that. You know, we want to give the players something to be proud of. We want them to be like, you know, not only did I compete, but hey, you can come watch me do it here in this amazing space. Or hey, check out this awesome thing we have. Or look at all the courses we have. Or or and have them be proud of the whole package. Because once you're once you're done with esports, once you're done with being a player, you know what what are you gonna do or what are you interested in? You know we want to we want to get people that are a complete package, not just not just a pro player. And I think while winning is great and that's gonna be a huge focus, is you want to include other things into that, and, and that's what we're looking to do. Part of my back background with leadership is actually working under David Plummer, who used to be an Olympic swimmer, and he was actually Michael Phelps's roommate. Um, and one of the biggest lessons that I learned from him in the time that he was helping our, our University of Minnesota teams play was legacy. And, you know, I think that's something that really speaks well to collegiate esports because when they come in, they have four dedicated years that they're going to be here. And like Chad said, you know, when they leave, we want them to look back on that experience, that college experience, which, you know, everyone just understands is really important and be like, here's what I accomplished. Here are, you know, the friends I made, the connections I made, and here's what I want to do afterwards. And those are all things that collegiate esports can provide, but you know, going into the industry without any other experience whatsoever, it's it's really daunting to be like, you know, I'm gonna go in, maybe do a year in, in some kind of side job, but then you know, what do I get out of it? 
But in collegiate, it's like you get a degree, you get to, to, to make a lot of cool connections, you get to compete, you get to learn all of these things and, and interact with people that are passionate about the same thing you are. And I think that's something that really no other esports avenue right now is, is providing for people. So collegiate esports has been around for a couple of years, depending on what esport you're talking about, but it's super bare bones. Like there aren't that many colleges doing it. The scholarships are few and far in between. They're they're of different, you know, monetary values. Nothing's consistent. There aren't a lot of names to look towards for collegiate esports. There are some uh, that are doing good work, but it's it's not consistent at all. And one of the things that we want to do is make a collegiate esport spot where people know where it is, know why it's there, what what they're doing, and just make it all so that everybody wants to to be there, to be a part of it. Um, whether it's training, whether it's education, whether it's being good at the game and winning, you know, depending on what you want to do, uh, we want Harrisburg to be that spot, and we're already doing things to make that the case. For more league interviews and analysis, subscribe to our channel. You can also find stats, discussions, and more on our website and mobile app at blitzesports.com.